Get our Bibles out. You're going to get used to this. We're going to raise it high. And let's say this. Well, I think we're going to say, yeah, say this with me. This is my Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Well, Randy, you were not supposed to try to make me cry. So, we are going to face the unknown with the certainty of God today. Now, think about that. What are situations in your life that you have faced the unknown? I can look back at my life and, you know, really every aspect of your life is really unknown because if you haven't figured this out by now, you are not in control. No matter how much you type A personalities, which I'm one of them, no matter how much we think we're in control, we are not. Anything can happen. Just 12 hours prior to coming here, I was in a hospital bed thinking I was dying with gallbladder pain. And I still got in a car Friday morning saying, God, I'm not going to let a gallbladder keep me from coming here. My wife thought I was stupid, but that's all right. All right? So I came, and here I am, and I'm okay. Thank, thank the Lord. Amen. Uh, I remember strapping myself into a Black Hawk on an island of Great Inagua. I was a first lieutenant, platoon leader, and we're about to go to war with Haiti. Most of you may not even know that, 1994. The mission that never happened, they called it. Strapped in 30 minutes from leaving, I remember going to my helicopter and just praying by myself, knowing that that day, I may have to kill someone. I may have to give orders for others to kill people. That I may have to send letters home to family members that their men died underneath my command. And I knew that I might die. I was scared. The unknown had called upon me. I couldn't see that 10 minutes later when the blades were turning that I would get a call that would say, Cosair 6, abort mission. And just praise God. I can remember when Randy called me the first time and I said, you know what, why don't you check out the other pastors before you come to me. Didn't I do that? He calls me back the next day, the other pastor's already gone and you're the one we want. God hadn't told me that yet. It was still so unknown to me what God was going to do. How about you? Maybe you've gone into a doctor visit and you got unexpected news and things become uncertain for you. Maybe you're sending your children off to to college or something or, or they're getting married and they're launching themselves into this new life and it's all unknown to you. It can be scary and intimidating, can it? Not that none of you Not that all of you didn't say profound things when I was here in February, but Sandy said something that I want to fall back on. She said that she was scared and she was excited about the change God would bring. And whether that was through me, change was going to happen. Remember saying that now? Guess what? It's true. Change is here. I'm here. Now for you, you still have each other. You love each other, and you're a family, and I'm kind of new, and this is really exciting for you. And I'm like got this bittersweet going on inside of me. I'm like hurting and trying to be excited and trying to figure this out, and I'm trying to forget. You guys have me at a disadvantage. You know my name. I have no idea who you are. (laughs) I'm usually good at names. And by the way, I have two visitors. I know their names. I'm good at that at my last church. You know, visitor comes in, man, you get the names down. You're all visitors to me. I've never been this overwhelmed in my life trying to figure out who's everybody, you know? But God's got a plan in the unknown to bring certainty. So over these next four sermons, we're going to travel with the life of Abram as he becomes Abraham. And we're going to go back to, if you will, the roots of our faith. We call Abraham the father of our faith. We call him the patriarch of our faith. When we go back and identify the God of the scriptures, we say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that distinguishes us from every other faith on the face of the earth. And it's through the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we get to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Which gives us the faith that makes us children of God and makes us the church that we are. So we need to understand this, and I'm going to use the life of Abram to show us that he was on a journey very similar to what we are right now. 
and every single one of us, where God called him to face the unknown, but to trust him, to be certain that God was in it. And I want to encourage you, the one thing you walk away from today's sermon is this, that no matter what you will face, no matter what unknown, that if you belong to God, that he will walk with you and that you can have certainty in your future for God. Every one of you. Me, you, this church, this community. When we are grounded in Christ, and that may even mean a martyr's death. That may even mean persecution. That may mean that we win favor with people in this community and great things happen that we can't ever anticipate. I don't know what it's going to be. Do you? I know what I hope. And that's what we prayed last night, isn't it? The aftershocks. Acts 4.31. That the Lord would shake the earth beneath our feet. That he would do something that would just cause a quake to take place where God would just do a mighty movement. I'm praying for that. I want you to join me in praying for that. And I want us to journey through this place of unknown as we read in Genesis chapter 12. If you can open your Bibles there. And let's put ourselves in the shoes of Abram as he hears this command from God. We'll be reading verses 1 through 9. I hear those pages turning, so I'll hold up a little bit. It's good. Listen to the word of the Lord. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house into the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land of the place of Shechem to the oak of Morah, at the time of the Canaanites where they were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, the, he moved on to the hill country, on to the east, to Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west, with Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. May God add a blessing to his holy word. I thought about this, and I've been really praying a, a lot about what Abram must have gone through and how, how scared that must be. I want you to really think He's 75 years old. He's known no other area but the Mesopotamian area in which he lived. There are many gods in this area. And now he hears this voice. He hears this command from the one true God. There's no scripture. There's no church to go to. There's nobody, there's no prophet or preacher telling him what to do or what's right or what's wrong or, or pointing him to God. It's, it's not there. It's just him these false gods in this land, the, the kindred and the land in which he's lived all his life, he's comfortable. He's probably wealthy. And this voice tells him to go. Not much, not much greater detail, right? Just go into the land, I will show you. Now most of you would say, I need to go down and talk to the shrink, right? You're thinking, I'm hearing voices right now. But Abram knows it's the voice of God. Abram somehow in the midst of all this says, this is God, and I'm willing to leave everything to follow him into the unknown. Kind of reminds me of Star Trek, right? You get any Star Trekkies out here? You know? We, go into the unknown. Go to a place where you don't know what's going to happen. That may be your workplace. That may be Panera's. By the way, I'm Panera preacher if you haven't figured that out, if you haven't watched it online. Most of you will spend time with me at Panera's one time or another. All right? So it may cause you to go into your school and to share the gospel. You may have to go to your home. You may have to actually teach your children about the Lord. Because if you think they got it today in Sunday school in one area, one hour, you're wrong. We are all called to go. Now, I've gone from Ohio to Maryland. And believe it or not, 
That may not sound that big of a deal. That's a big deal. That's a far journey for me. And it's a far journey because I'm going from a place where I know I was unconditionally loved. I learned a new term from uh, Deacon Helpler over here that uh, sir means that you're showing me respect. Someone I respect. I know that I had that there. I hope that I get it here. I know that they staunchly supported me there and I've come here. Can, can you see this unknown, this unfamiliarity? Now, you all are excited. I'm excited. And you know what? The honeymoon I know will last a little bit. But then what happens? You know? That's when I go look into Randy and I go, Randy, what'd you do to me? I pray those days never come. Because if we all walk with the Lord, it's going to be like Abram. It may not be smooth, but we're going to know God's leading us somewhere. And we're going to follow him to the unknown, knowing the certainty of God. I would not be here if I did not believe in full obedience, that I, full complete obedience of what I'm doing is of God. And look, it says in verse 4, so Abraham went just as the Lord had told him. Now, I didn't hear an audible voice. Didn't have that happen. But in my gut, I just knew. In my spirit, I just knew this had to happen. And it became uh, difficult when I left. And I want to share just briefly because he started to do this. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do this a little bit today. I have learned more about love in the last two months than I think my whole life from Christian people. I have seen a pouring out of love from people in a, a way, in, they're not my flesh and blood. I mean, you know, my wife and my children, that's a love that's a different type of love, and my family is a different type of love. But to have the love poured out like they have for me this last two months has just been amazing. So I want to tell you something here that I've learned. Don't wait until someone's leaving or dying to tell them how much you appreciate them and love them. Don't wait to do that. I'm not saying that I didn't know that already, but wow. Make sure you tell people every time you get, I appreciate you, I love you, this is how I view you. Because I look at myself as some high-charging guy, which I am, and, and Bill Moore, he's one of my uh, senior deacons at, at the church I came from, he said, this guy was always pushy. So get ready, I'm pushy. But you know what he said? But he's the most loving man I know. I never knew that. I never knew that. Maybe there's something about you that you don't know. In a good, wives, this is not a time to beat your husband up. It's to tell them the good things, okay? Amen? But everybody look at each other and find something and say, this is what I love about you. And I, I want you to do that today before you leave this place. I want you to find someone in this room that you say, wow, I see this in you, and I don't think I've ever told you that, and I want to tell you that now. And make this thing start off, this unknown, a positive experience that we know that God is in all this. So Abraham went, right? He came, and he, he pursued God's plan and God's path with certainty that God was going to do something great. Then we move on, and what happens next is we see that Abraham not only goes, but then he finds a promise. See, God just didn't tell him to go and then leave him hanging. He promised him something very big. And I want you to know, because we're children of God, do you know that we all are a part of Abraham's promise? In fact, you and I in this very room, we're the fulfillment. I'm going to preach in a couple weeks on the covenant. We're the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. You and I are. What he could not see, he only had one offspring. One flesh. But what he couldn't see was someday there was a church. There was a nation called Israel, and then there would be a church. And all the seas of the sand, the sand of the seas, would not be as much as us. We would be like the stars in the heavens. That's you and me. We are the fulfillment of God's promise. So let's look at what he says about this promise and see all the details of what he does. He says that I will make you a great nation. I'm in verse 2. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. You will bless those who bless you. Those who dishonor you, I will curse. It's okay to say, God, curse those that curse me. Right there. And you will, and all families of the earth, all the families of the earth will be blessed by you. Do you all realize how great God is? How great he is. Do you believe that God has great things for Lexington Park, 
Baptist church. So half of you do, half of you don't. Do you believe that God has great things in store for Lexington Park Baptist Church? Amen. You need to. Abram had to cling to this. Abram had to believe in all of his heart, wait a minute, God, not only have I now, you know, I've, I'm following the process of your plan here to go, now I've got this promise. And he's going to struggle with this promise. If you know the life of Abram, he struggles with it. He takes matters in his own hand and messes things up and does all kinds of stuff. Anybody been out there and done that? Yes? Okay. Any of you guys ever put things together and you didn't read the instructions and your wife said, didn't you read the instructions? <laughs> Why is there an extra screw? There's not one. You kick it to the side, right? <laughs> right? That, you know, Abram's no different than us. But we need to cling to this promise that God has great things for you and me. We need to believe in it. Now, he made the promises to Abram. So all you scholars out there, don't come hit me after service. I understand this is directly to Abram. But the implications of it are upon us because we're part of the fulfillment of it. So if God said, I'm going to bless Abraham, God wants to bless you because you're a part of Abraham because you are a child of God through the Messiah who takes the lineage back to Father Abraham. Isn't that a beautiful thing? You don't have to be a Jew. That's why the gospel went to both the Jews and the Gentiles. That's why Jesus came. That's why the church was birthed. That's why Lexington Park Baptist Church exists in the 21st century. We are a part of the blessing of God. And God should want to bless us. God should want to make his name great through Lexington Park Baptist Church. Our job is to make him great. Our job is to point everybody to Jesus, the name above all names. Our job is to, to make sure that he is famous. If any glory comes upon Lexington Park Baptist Church or the ministry of Chris McCombs or through your personal ministry, it all goes back to the purpose that God has called you and is using you and you need to give him all the glory. May greatness come here. May his blessings come. May all the families of the earth, that means your family, that means my family, be blessed. Because of Abraham's obedience. And may the blessing come upon us, and notice this, it must come because you obey. Right? Trust and obey, for there's no other way. You guys know that hymn. Right? It's true. Abram was blessed because he, he obeyed. Well, we have the courage to obey too. Next thing I want to bring out is there's power when you're going through these uncertain times and these unknowns. You need to be in the presence of God like no other time. My prayer time has increased in, in this transition time and just spending time with God and, and I've cried and I've praised and I've, done, I've been in his presence though. And the presence of God comes with power. Now you could read this text and miss this. There's two times Abram has to come before the presence of God. In Shechem and in Bethel. They both become very, very important religious places in the history of Israel, especially Bethel. And when you look at what happens here, we see that in, in Shechem, he comes to the Oak of Morah, and he says, the Lord appeared to Abram. I don't know what this looked like, but that's pretty cool. Abram was in the presence of God Almighty. Have you ever gone before the Lord and you just know he was there? I want to break news to you. This is something we're going to do here. Guess who's here? Guess who's here? The Lord. He's here. He's the unseen guest every single week. His presence is here. We are at Shechem. We are at Bethel every week when we step in here together as a body of Christ. Every time you go before his throne, guess what? He is there. And I was talking to someone before this, and they're like, man, if only... God would do what he did to Paul. If only God would do what he did to Isaiah. If only God would do what he did to Ezekiel. And we could actually see the God. You know what? Those things don't happen very often. But I'm telling you, what does happen often is God is always present. If Jesus says, I'll never forsake you or leave you, I'll never abandon you, I take him at his word. I believe that he's with us and he's present. And when he's present, we should worship him. It says both times, listen, I, he built an altar there to the Lord. Then on down to verse 8. And then it says, he built an altar to the Lord and he called upon the name of the Lord. That is why we gather to worship. That is why we come together. And that's why I can be here at Lexington Park Baptist Church or any church and I can worship God. 
and so can you. That's why I know it's an amazing thing. Right now on Sunday morning, at least in America and other places in the world, we know that there are our brothers and sisters in Christ that are worshiping God, that are coming before the presence of God. And God is here just as much as he is there in Ohio, just as much as he is in Japan or any other place in the world. God is here. God is present. Will we worship him in truth and spirit? When we face the unknown, worship gives us certainty because we can sense his presence. Maybe there's a time where you, you felt that way. I shared with you when I was in my Blackhawk and I was strapped in. Who would have thought worship could take place in a U.S. Army UH-60 Blackhawk? It did that day. I'd never had so much peace in my life. There have been times in my life where bad things were happening and I've turned to God. Samuel almost died, you'll hear that testimony later, at birth. And it was after we had lost our child. We have another child named Victoria. She died at birth. You want to talk about uncertainty? You want to talk about doubt? You want to talk about pain? Those are moments I will never forget, though, because I know God was with me. And it's out of those experiences that God did some miraculous things in my life, brought miraculous healing, brought, and actually led me back to the ministry to leave the military because I thought I was going to retire. And God said, after 14 years, oh, no, sir. Now you're going to follow me and go to seminary. I mean, this is crazy. Six more years and I got a paycheck. Imagine if I had followed my gut instead of God's leading. Maybe you've been in those situations where you know God was leading you. Always obey him when he does it. I never regret any of those times, even though they may have been painful experiences or leaving Brahman. I don't regret any of those because I know and have felt the presence of God like like an amazing experience, like a burning bush experience, like an Isaiah experience where I had to say, okay, God, here I am, send me. Every single one of us, those things are going to happen. Will we respond with worship and in the presence of God? The last thing I want us to lead off in is this. It says in verse 9, and then Abram journeyed on, still going towards the Negev. Our journey with God never ends. There's a song that's on the radio, and I don't know what the Christian station is around here, but God is on the move. I like that song. We need to sing it. All right? God is on the move. Who's heard it? All right, a couple of you. God is on the move. It's our job to journey with him. It's our job to join him. So what we're going to do, some people have asked, well, what are you going to change? What are you going to do? What? I have no idea. I'm being honest with you. But I do know this, that God wants us to do something, experiencing God 101. Anybody has been through experiencing God? You join God where he is at work. That's what we do. So I have to believe that if God has brought me here and he's brought you here and we're all together, that he's got something going on. So what we need to do is figure out what that is. That's not to sit in the pews and do nothing. That means we continue to journey towards the Negev. We continue to journey to wherever God's final destination is for us. And then he may have another journey for us. Abram's journeys did not end just because he reached in the give. He continued to do things. God continued to bless him. The promise wasn't fulfilled, was it? It wasn't even fulfilled in what? In Isaac. Did the promise become fulfilled? No. Not fully. Did it come fulfilled in Jacob? No. It's not even fulfilled to this day. Until the Lord comes, the numbers of Abraham's seed are never done. The children of God continue to grow, and it's our job to go out and reach people with Jesus. So today, here's what we're going to do. I don't know who's saved and who's not saved in this room. Now you're going to say, I've been a Baptist for 50, 60 years. You try telling that to Jesus if you don't know him. I want every man and woman in this room to examine their heart. To go to this place of unknown, to say, do I know the plan of salvation? Do I have a saving knowledge of what Jesus Christ has done to me? Do I believe in his death? Do I believe in his burial? Do I believe in his resurrection? Do I believe that he is alive this day and he's working in my life and he's among us and I know that I have eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ? If you know that to be true with all of your heart and you've called upon his name, then the Bible tells us you're saved. And if you're saved, glory to God, amen. That is something that we should never uh, fail to be excited about. But some of us in here, we may be struggling with things in life and we need to come back to God maybe and rededicate our lives. Maybe this is a day where you need to say, God, I've been sitting in the pew, I've been a bench warmer for too long, I'm stepping up my game now. 
Maybe that's you today. Maybe you've been in here and you've never been baptized or believer's baptism. Maybe today you need to come forward and say, I want to be baptized. You know, one of the, I consider that my greatest honor to baptize people, by the way. And I usually let the father or, or somebody come and this is the coolest thing. My son has been working on his, this friend. He's a good friend all his life. And since we were leaving, they've really gotten close together. And, and, I, and I took him and, and his friend Greg shooting uh, the other day. They have a crossbow range out where, where we live. And we led Greg to the Lord at the crossbow range. And I'm going back in June, and I'm baptizing him in the Cuyahoga River. And Samuel's going to help me baptize him. That's so cool. I don't know why anybody would ever want to miss that opportunity. So if you've never been baptized, that's a beautiful thing because it portrays your faith in Jesus Christ. It connects your life with his death, burial, and resurrection and says, I am a Christian to the whole world. So I pray if you've never done that, I pray that you will. And today maybe you're here. And you're like, you've been looking for a church, and you've been hearing that I was coming. Uh, oh, whoop de doo big, I'm here now. Because <laughs> Jesus is here. It's not about me, it's about Jesus, and about what we're going to do with Jesus. So if you're here, and you're looking for a church home, and you've never officially joined, and maybe today you come here just to check it out, or maybe you're new, or whatever it might be, and you're like, I know God is here, and I know he's calling me right now, then I want you to be like Abram and get up in a moment when we sing a song and walk down and say, I want to be saved. I want to be baptized. I want to be a part of this body of believers called Lexington Park Baptist Church. I believe great things are coming, and I want to be a part of it. And if that's you today, that's the invitation. Every week is going to be like this. Every week, do you need to respond to God? Now, some of you may not have any of those things you need to do, but you know you've got the calling of Abraham on your life. And you know what you're doing? You're like the guy that gets the instructions and pulls them out, puts them to the side, and you're trying to put this thing together on your own. It's time that all of us realize God never intended us to do it alone. All of us are a body of Christ in this room. All of us are Team Jesus. You're going to get used to that term, too. We are Team Jesus, and we're in this thing called church. It's not a game. It's real. It's a game of life. And we need to take it that seriously, just like Abraham. If God's calling you, would you go? I did, and I want you to know I'm modeling it for you. And you may think, I've got my game face out. I do. I'm hurting inside, but I'm here, and I'm excited because I know God's got great things. And I'm looking forward to each Sunday going, wow, 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 and the momentum building and to see what God's going to do here. I think it's going to be amazing. I really believe that with all of my heart. Do you? That's an amen moment, okay? Do you? You guys are going to have to get used to me, okay? I'm going to call people out like Sandy and say, hey, Sandy said this. You're going to go, oh, my gosh. I'm going to actually ask participation. You know, when, when I ask for stuff, you can respond back appropriately. Is that a good thing or not? I don't know. We'll find out. All right. So let's do that. Let's end in prayer, though. And then I'm going to have the worship team come up, and you guys lead us in an altar call. I'll have Joe, if you could come stand up here with me. And Anibal, I'll have you come stand up here every week. We'll have a deacon and pastor up here up front to receive you if you want to come down and make a decision for Christ. Let's pray.